Welcome to Digital Asset News. Take a top stories in cryptocurrency and digital assets. And I break them down to bite-sized pieces. So today we have some more concerning news about India as a RBI or the Reserve Bank of India sticks to its stand on cryptocurrencies and wants them all banned. So we'll take a little trip down memory lane, uh, what has been happening over the last uh, couple of weeks and months, and then get into uh, some things that uh, the banks have been doing and uh, how this smells a little fishy to me. On top of that, uh, let's take a quick look at uh, the fact that uh, I made an NFT because I didn't really understand what the heck they were. So the best way to do things is just dive in headfirst and actually get them done. So we'll take a look at my super fantastic NFT that took me uh, a whole 10 seconds to make and uh, we will go from there. So first, let's take a look what's going on in the market. So today it is uh, March 15th, uh, almost high noon El Paso, Texas time. So we traveled all the way back. Uh, we are here. The uh, investment property has already been set up and uh, just waiting for people to come on in. I think they come in uh, tonight, matter of fact. So uh, hope it all works out. That's the great thing about Airbnb. So we'll see how that goes. Anyhow, this is the total market cap, uh, 1.7 trillion. Average daily sentiment. And of course, we're using Trade the Chain because it uh, does all that scraping of data throughout all the different blog posts and websites and, and uh, integrates uh, one of five with uh, of cryptocurrency companies to integrate directly with Twitter. And the average daily sentiment for cryptocurrency, 57 out of 100, which is not too bad when you have the possibility of a huge country with over a billion people talking about banning uh, the entire Bitcoin and cryptocurrency uh, crypto sphere. So uh, that's uh, not too bad. I, I remember, you know, years ago, this would have crippled us for quite a long time. And uh, to, now today, we're just like, man, whatever. India, whatever you want to do, you know, just make up your mind and then you know, shoot there. So uh, that's what's going on. Let's see. Hottest on Twitter. I don't know any of these. Balancer. Sounds good. Troy, Cody. Engine, which I'm probably going to get into as I've been taking a look at that more and more. Uh, it only makes sense, you know, as they integrate with all these different gaming platforms and you can do a bunch of NFTs for all the different things that people need on gaming because of gaming and esports and everything else is gonna be huge. Why not engine? So I'll probably do a little uh, video on that, but let's see what exactly is going on as far as uh, the numbers. So Bitcoin was at a, almost 62,000 and it dropped, uh, dropped precipitously. Let me blow this up actually, so you can see it, uh, about what is going on here. And I gotta tell you, uh, not too bad for a country, which is, like I said, about to ban uh, crypto, if they do it. Who knows if they do it? I don't know. So uh, that is what's going on with uh, Bitcoin itself. Uh, Ethereum, yeah, pretty good. Uh, only down 4%, 4%. Let's see, anything up? Ah, let's see. Anything down, down 7%, 21% for VeChain. Uh, VeChain just got listed on crypto.com. So I'm sure people are buying that up like crazy. So good for you guys. I'm a holder myself. And again, super biased. All the things that I own, I'm always talking about them. Like Algorand, I don't know, own it. So I'm not going to talk about it that much. If something fantastic comes out, I will. But uh, just how I am, biased. And uh, that's about it. So, ooh, 20, hey, 27% for Engine Coin. I probably should get into that at some point before it takes off. Anyhow, so that's what's going on in the market. Let's just uh, let's just jump into today's top story, shall we? So this one, I remember when I first when when I first got in the cryptocurrency, and China was the big bad player, and they were you know uh, going back and forth between you know we're going to ban it, we're not going to ban it. And actually, the first NFT that I created was all about uh, China banning cryptocurrency. And that day, this was back in uh, December, December of 2019. Uh, that was, I mean, it dropped so much in one day just because China said, eh, we're thinking about banning it. And they said the same thing that India is talking about. We like blockchain. We don't like Bitcoin. And currencies, or we're going to do that. And we're not going to let currencies come in. So the same thing's happening here. So what exactly is going on? So... Uh, New Delhi, the RBI, the Reserve Bank of India, is sticking to its stance and they want to ban cryptocurrencies because, you know, why not? Anyhow, while asserting that the technology of blockchain should be encouraged, again, blockchain's good, but cryptocurrency is bad. Blockchain's fantastic, but cryptocurrency, we just can't have that. Why is that? Well, I'll tell you in a bit. Uh, they said that a, a currency, this is the Reserve Bank of India, they say, look, a currency is a sovereign right of a country and it cannot be assigned to any individual entity. Uh, we just can't have that. We can't have that slip of power happen. It has to be with the country. And remember, they're the Reserve Bank of India. It's not like, like the Federal Reserve in America. Uh, there's, they're about as federal as uh, Federal Express. 
They're not a federal agency. They work closely with the governments, but it's not a government agency. Reserve Bank of India, they're talking about, oh, it's sovereign, only the nations can really decide about it. Well, they can decide, and they already decided that this was okay because this is what happened uh, March 5th of 2020, just a short year ago, where the India's highest court, they overturned the cryptocurrency trading ban. They go, look, you can't do that to people. If people want to take their hard-earned money and they want to trade it for cryptocurrency, then let them do that. And that is what the highest court, kind of like the America's Supreme Court, uh, decided at that point. And they said, okay, sounds good. And then from there, nothing really happened with India. Everyone was happy. Uh, Wazir X, the exchange opened up. Everything was good. And then we had this nice little, uh, little article that came about that said, hey, look, um, we're thinking about banning it again, but don't worry, because the finance minister, she predicts a very calibrated stance. And what she said was this. She goes, obviously, uh, the Reserve Bank will be taking a quorum on how, what kind of unofficial currency, cryptocurrency will have to be planned and how it has to be regulated. So nowhere in here is she talking about, you know what, we're going we're gonna to look at this blockchain and really go from there. She's talking about currency and cryptocurrency. And then all of a sudden they're like, nope, uh, we're just going to go back on that. And uh, that's just how it's going to be. Anyhow, to finish up, uh, the central bank has also raised security risks linked to cryptocurrencies. How many times have we heard about this? Oh, it's going to give rise to money laundering, terror financing, and, you know, the cartels. That's all they use is Bitcoin. They have never used the U.S. dollar or the ruple or the pound or the yen or the yuan. They just, they've only used Bitcoin. And once they get Bitcoin, it's going to be so much easier for them to do things. Well, and of course, the anonymity of the transaction. So let's just talk about that for a second, shall we? So when we talk about the banks... Reserve Bank of India working with the uh, retail banks. It's the same thing here. Uh, you know, the uh, Federal Reserve is like, you know what? We can't have this. We can't have this kind of uh, money laundering because our banks are the highest level of uh, ethics and morals. And wait, what's this? So Wells Fargo, you know, a little fraudulent savings and checking accounts on behalf of Wells Fargo, clients without their consent, millions of them. And the, the only complaint when they started to see all these different frauds being charged or different, uh, you know, different uh, accounts that they were uh, mysteriously opened in their names and going, hey, why am I getting charged for these accounts? I never opened these. Oh, well, you owe us. And uh, that went through millions and millions of people. Of course, they got busted for that. And what happened? They only paid a fine. Me and you do that, we're in jail. But banks do that, that's just the cost of it, doing business. And on top of that, you got these little things like the JP Morgan Chase scandal, 30 billion in fines and counting. Then you had uh, ING, where they're like, uh, we missed this uh, almost billion dollars of money laundering from cartels. We just, we just couldn't figure it out. We just, it just doesn't make any sense to us. We're only the banks. Ah, and on and on. And on we go. So I'll get to that later. But this is the thing. Um, when you talk about like, you know, the banks want to really do all these things. And uh, the, 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 the Federal Reserve is the Reserve Bank. The reason why they want to do it is because they want to keep control of what's going on. And it really just comes down to this. This is the last sentence. I was, as I was reading this, this, this article, I'm like, what are they going to say it? Just say it. Just say it. I know they're going to do it. In recent weeks, the RBI has also talked about bringing its own digital currency, which is different from cryptocurrencies. Of course. Of course. Why would they want to let any other cryptocurrency out, like a Bitcoin, like a Ethereum, like a, an XRP, like a Cardano, or anything like that, and that she, that she can use as a currency uh, into the country when they can just create themselves because it's a sovereign right, right? Uh, there's no way that the common people could figure this out and it can make it work for them. So of course, when they talk about we want to ban these things, this is why, because they want to make it themselves. And that's okay. I mean, that's what you, want, what you want to do. Hopefully the Indian people rise up and say, you can't do this to us. And hopefully the lawmakers come through and say, you can't ban this. We're going to work together, come to the table, just like uh, what the finance minister said, hey, we're going to work this through with the reserve banks and make this actually happen. And they're not going to ban anything. It's not going to be as bad as you thought it was. And here we are. That's pretty bad. So when you take a look at this, this is why when you see these types of articles where a French lawmaker signs a petition to allow central banks to buy and hold Bitcoin, just be careful with this because it's just one lawmaker and just one person signing a petition. So the real question is, can you get this through all of your uh, legislature and actually make turn this into law and not just uh, like, hey, this is something we should do. So um, 
this is what I think on this one. I just threw this in there because I'm like, it's just interesting that we've got some people who are on the right side of, of history and other people who are just trying to uh, just stall what's going on. But uh, in my personal opinion, uh, I don't think that this will actually go through. I don't think there will actually be a ban. because it's. I mean, let's say they do ban cryptocurrency. Let's say they do ban exchanges. Well, that's great because in the rest of the world, it's like, you don't want to use it? That's cool because the, all of us will just continue to use this and we'll have to leave you behind. And uh, I think for uh, economic equality, it wouldn't really behoove them to do those types of things. Again, these are just my opinions. I could be wrong. Let me know what you think in the comments section. Let's move on to our next piece.